Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is important. If you look at the front cover, what do you see? Pass it around. Pass it around the audience. Done. What do you see? What do you really see? Stare. Stare at that fucking tin of evil. <laughs> of ice cream evil. Makes it look so sexy. Lad, lad. Like ice cream porn. Channel 5 porn. You know, David Duchovny, Richie Diaries, like that. You know, eclectic. What can you see? It's a dead fucking lion with flies coming out of it, intestine open. A, a commercially acceptable form of advertising in this country for 120 years. And I remember this beautiful scene, this is eight year old kid going, Mommy, Mommy, sir! And I can imagine like the lion just leaping out of the fucking thing going, Hey, come on your ice cream, I'm your ice cream. And like that, you'd be like, Oh, I still want it! <laughs> But that, you know, that's what I felt at the time. But the beautiful thing to sum up parts of Nottingham is I was walking past Matterland in the Broadmarsh and a 16-year-old girl comes out with a can of Coke in one hand and a burger. Like that really just really disillusioned. I can imagine you know, the music creep from where you head or whatever. I imagine that music anyway, even in job centres. And like that. And she's like that. And it's across this, uh, her chest, this beautiful pink T-shirt with the sparkly words, Inspired. <laughs> I was very inspired. <laughs> um, I don't know if any of you remember your first kiss. Mm. Yeah. What was it like? Was it, was it tense? Right. Was it weird? Did you have a Lino Di Franco soundtrack? Did you have a small bowl go, Don't do me like that, Frederick! Or, you know, was it good? It, it, was, uh, it was beautiful. Was it beautiful? Oh. Well, mine was, she was, she was half stoned and half asleep, so I felt like I was invading a <laughs> I felt like I was invading a small country. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. George, you're the dungeon. Sorry. Not, not yet. Not. But when you're first kissing like that, you want to do, I didn't realise for ten years that you could actually kiss sideways. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's why I thought, no, I can't do that. But like that, and I was like, oh, like that, and uh, 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 you go top, bottom, lip, like that, like that. <laughs> And suddenly she woke up, she woke up. <laughs> I revitalise her with that stone kiss to Led Zeppelin at volume all the way to 11. And uh, this is dedicated to that. Lost. I am lost, I asked you, but you said no. And so I carried on looking for all the lost things in the world. They say that you can't lose love without finding it first, but that's wrong. For Daniel, the orangutan, is surrounded by it five times a day. For he lives in a cage and has no say in staring at love. Love is like a cage, but you choose to go into it and you are not given a key because you left it next door and Mrs. Margaret was a bit upset about it and you have to have this old conversation about the fact that you left some mouldy bread near the bin but she said you can have the key to love anyway and I think that's okay. You are the provoker, you are the stimulator, you are the desire, you are the denial. Don't think it's easy, but really, love is like a disease that humanity doesn't want to get rid of. Love is like one of those weird 1980s kind of sex education videos that you have to go through that you feel a bit awkward about. I'm Jimmy the Sperm! Slide with the Greek gods of chastity, for they want your songs oh so much. Well, I ad lived a bit of that, but people wouldn't be happy. It was emergency joke number two. Yes. Hey. Okay. This is based on the true story. It's called How I Killed Nick Griffin with my penis. <laughs> Say again. It's called How I Killed Nick Griffin with my penis. Great. And I'm just going to try and find my penis here. <laughs> in these pages. Like that. Okay. <laughs> they will be here. Oh my god, no. I can't find you. It's like, like a flower pressing. Is it like a flower pressing? Yeah, like poems are like met metaphysical little glow in the dark words. I'm Emily Dickinson, the floating little worm! Get Emily Dickinson, put her in a box! I don't know. <laughs> I was uh, talking about your penis. Oh, anyway. I've got one about Emily Dickinson, actually. It's called Emily Dickinson Wants to Kill Me Now. <coughs> Views from a hotel window, splendid, Mama. Such quaint pastures for this time of year. The men laughing, the women singing. The sounds of the city calling to my heart, a king to a caged dove, hearing the call of the wind. Miss! Miss? What? Miss? What? Miss? What? Miss? What? You weren't listening, Miss. Now I'll repeat the question. How long have you kept your son's head underneath the floorboards? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because you have to get pressure to do modern contemporary poetry for some goddamn reason. Uh, if you remember GCSEs? Co-levels. 
Lost shoe. Um, I don't know if you've ever been in a moment where you've woken up in the morning and you've lost underwear, you've lost an eyeball, you've lost a handkerchief. Um, I lost a shoe and I wandered all around Nottingham for about four hours. Um, <coughs> someone had spied my drink with MDMA in Kettenham and this girl went, It's called the Fandango drink! <laughs> and I was like, oh, I've had an amazing! You should get Coca Cola to sponsor it. And I took it and I spent four hours going around Nottingham trying to find a shoe, and even though it turns out I was wearing both of them. <laughs> Forgotten hymns and baking trays, whimsical lays, hazy days, bloody footprints of jaded times, butter smeared kisses of love laden crimes. I carried on to an undoubting slam. You just smiled, son. <laughs> and then I was found five hours later on top of the steps of Rock City staring at a cigarette, and I was saying, it's like a castle, a castle entirely made out of ash, and there's three metaphysical beings, and they're born inside a cigarette, and they've got five minutes to find out what it would be, be a man or woman, to, and to discover love and sex and the mind, but they have no concept of time, so they don't know they're going to die. It's your final major project tomorrow, is that your only idea? Yeah, we'll use it. <laughs> and I did. I can't find it, I'm going to have to improvise it. I don't want to improvise poetry. Oh, there we go. I stare at my penis. <laughs> it stares back at me. We both wait at least ten minutes till the silence ebbs away. Do you love me? My penis inquires. I say nothing. What can one say? My left hand pats him gently on his small, quivering head, and we both laugh at our inevitable demise. For ladies and gentle boys, to have a penis <coughs> is the pilgrim's progress for spiritual generation. But one day, my penis will leave me, and I will be able to live a more normal and peaceful life. My penis's name is Jeremy, by the way. Jeremy starts to scream, forcing my legs to lunge forward, carrying my breath into East Islington, and for some reason, a lovely greasy spoon cafe in central Bovna. I cry out, please, Jeremy, stop this madness. What are you trying to reach? I am beginning to evolve, he said. God needs to answer for the mistake of creating male and female genitalia. What on earth do you mean, Jeremy? <laughs> <laughs> Our minds, our souls are the new genitalia. They make us see the future for what it really is. And what would that be, you mad member? Our bodies will dissolve and the entire world's nation will unite into one huge ball of spiritual ectoplasm, bowling ball euphoria. In the centre of the world, a universal orgasm. But unfortunately that we copyrighted by Saturday Night Fever and turned into an advertisement for a ball. Two years later, I buried my Jeremy. But he exploded out of the grave in the bottom of my garden near my jokes. And he went! And he went like a huge, cascading volcano explosion into the center of the universe, where suddenly all the stars started to make shape and make form. Like astrology, it made Nick Griffin's face. Hello! <laughs> Nick Griffin, said Jeremy, had small Griffin with scared hair penis in his IKEA design clothes. What do you want? <clears throat> I've come to channel Mystic Meg. You've come to channel Mystic Meg? I come to channel her, and I will paddle into her mind using a psychic kinetic energy to control people who read the sun, and they will come out of the star signs and take their minds so they will vote for me. And so Jeremy went in quivering and quivering and quivering and quivering and zoomed straight into fucking Nick Griffin's idol and skull fucked to the death. <laughs> <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, when you have a hangover, and when your genitalia feels a bit weird, realise that it's sending a kinetic prayer to Jeremy, my penis. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs>